Hello team, how's it going? Welcome to a new video. Welcome to Combat Ready HQ. We've got a great video here by Jeremiah. It's the darkest day in special operations history. So this sounds very interesting, um, but also could be quite sad. So looking forward to getting into this though and finding out a little bit about the special operations history of the US. Uh, as always, please check out the original video in the description. Go give them a like, a follow, subscribe, share as much as you can, please. But as we get into it, always remember to comment and subscribe. Check out our Instagram and our free Discord to join the community. Check out our merch, coffee, free website. I'd really appreciate all the support, but let's go. This is footage of one of the darkest days in special operations history. On the day this footage was taken, May 3rd, 2016, the special operations community lost what I truly believe to be one of the greatest warriors of our time. Special Warfare Operator First Class Charles Keating IV was born on February 1st, 1985 in Phoenix, Arizona. Keating's family had a long history of participating in competitive sports. His father was an American former competitive swimmer who represented the United States in swimming at the 1976 Summer Olympics. His grandfather won the National College Championship in the 200-yard breaststroke at the NCAA Swimming and Diving Championship. They are also related to four-time Olympic medalist Gary Hall Sr. and 10-time medalist Gary Hall Jr. Wow. During high school, Charlie participated in sports as well, making a name for himself in his junior and senior years as a champion runner. After graduating high school, he attended Indiana University and was accepted to the track team. After the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks, he decided he wanted to join the military and become a U.S. Navy SEAL. And so, when the time was right in 2007, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy, leaving Indiana University. He graduated from basic underwater demolition SEAL training in 2008 and served two deployments in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom and one tour in Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. He then served as the leading petty officer of the West Coast Sniper Reconnaissance Training Cell. Upon nice. completion of his tour as an instructor, Charlie checked back into a West Coast based SIL team as a platoon leading petty officer in February of 2015. He was then deployed to Iraq for a third time in support of Operation Inherent Resolve. His decorations include the Silver Star, the Navy Cross, a Purple Heart, a Bronze Star Medal with Valor, Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal, Army Achievement Medal, Iraq Campaign Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, National Defense Medal, and Rifle and Pistol Expert Ribbons. During his third... Already just sounds like an absolute brilliant and mega operator. And it's like pictures like this just remind me of Vietnam. Um, so, yeah. On May 3rd, 2016, at 7.30 a.m., a small U.S. advise and assist team and Kurdish partner forces were stationed in the town of Teleskov when a force of more than 120 ISIS fighters pushed into the area. The so ISIS long. force was made up of 19 armored technicals along with at least one heavily modified bulldozer while the advise wow. and assist team was made up of less than a dozen look at those vehicles look what they did sorry to interrupt but look that's what they were going up against like even though you people just think about isis it's not just like sort of plain clothes civilians running around like mercenaries um running around with weapons um in just crappy vehicles they were doing the best they can to become a military um, to go up against another military. They were modifying explosives. They were using drones. They were trying to get sort of uniform. They were getting as many weapons as possible. They were modifying cars. They were trying to get their hands on armor, other armored vehicles, tanks and fighter jets and all sorts. It wasn't just like people running around. And now in, um, they, along with their partner like, force, flip -flops. were severely outgunned. But luckily for them, Special Warfare Operator First Class Charles Keating was part of a quick reaction force heading their way to rescue them. By the time the quick reaction force arrived, 
The enemy had punched through the forward lines and was inside the town. Keating and his team quickly took up position on a rooftop in the town with the advise and assist team. But they That's found how they're carrying their flag on their back. Completely surrounded in the ensuing battle. Up until this point, the members of the Kurdish partner force were certain they were not getting out of this situation alive. But Charlie loved the Kurdish people and had spent a lot of time supporting them both on and off the battlefield. So the partner force knew exactly who he was and what he was capable of. And so when he arrived, he brought a tremendous amount of much needed hope to the soldiers. Charlie immediately took charge of the situation and started calling out enemy locations and directing the fire of his teammates. Thankfully, due to the severity of the situation, they were able to get a tremendous amount of air support. And I'm talking F-15, F-16s, drones, B-52 bombers, and multiple A-10 warthogs. They sent absolutely everything to thin out the enemy's overwhelming numbers. Unfortunately, one of the first bombs dropped on the enemy's position missed and landed just a little bit behind the enemy, which forced the enemy to aggressively push forward onto the team's position, which made the situation for Charlie and his team much, much worse. One of Charlie's teammates said that the best guys in a firefight will always be in the most dangerous positions. Too right. Because someone has to hold those positions regardless of how dangerous it is, and that's exactly what Charlie did. The men lucky enough to fight alongside Charlie said he was completely fearless and selfless in battle, always putting himself in harm's way to protect his brothers. Approximately two hours into the firefight, they were getting completely overrun, and Charlie was holding a position the enemy was really focusing their fire on. Bullets were flying everywhere, whipping right past Charlie, but he held his position regardless single-handedly eliminating dozens of enemy fighters and keeping them from flanking his teammates. But eventually one round made it inside his body armor, and despite his team's best efforts to treat his wound and their incredible ability to get him quickly medevaced out of the area, his wound just simply wasn't survivable, and Charles Keating gave his life for his brothers that day. But thanks to his heroic actions, no other U.S. troops were injured, and the Kurdish forces were able to take back Teleskov, and more than 70 ISIS fighters were killed that day, along with the destruction of all of their armored vehicles. Nice a few one. days later, one of Charlie's platoon mates sent a letter to his parents saying this, Please tell everyone Chuck saved a lot of lives today. Partner force fled and Navy SEALs held the line. Chuck was leading the fight as always. He went unconscious with that big signature smile on his handsome face. Chuck was full of aloha, but also a ferocious warrior who killed dozens today to save his brothers. Long live the Brotherhood. Charles Keating IV, Charlie or Chuck or C4, was born into a family of veterans, all American athletes and Olympians, even a gold medalist. So naturally, Charlie and the love of his life, Brooke, celebrated their anniversary on the 4th of July. She called him the huge goofball everybody wanted to be friends with, the adventurer who surfed and spearfished and planned to sail around the world. When the Twin Towers fell, he was in high school and he decided to enlist. Joined the SEALs because he told his friends it was the hardest thing to do. He deployed to Afghanistan and three times to Iraq, earning a Bronze Star for Valor. Earlier this month, while assisting local forces in Iraq who had come under attack, he gave his life. A few days later, one of his platoon mates sent Charlie's parents a letter from Iraq. Please tell everyone Chuck saved a lot of lives today, it said. He left us with that big signature smile on his handsome face as always. Chuck was full of aloha, but was also a ferocious warrior. So today we honor Chief Special Warfare Officer Charles Keating IV. Guys, I have a link down in the description to the Charles Keating Foundation. 
please go check it out and give them your support. I will also have a link down below for you to get a copy of the book Charlie's mother wrote about him called Charlie Don't Be a Hero. Also, please share this video with your family and friends. Charlie's incredible story deserves to be shared and honored. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Charles Keating, thank you for your sacrifice and thank you for the way you lived your life as an incredible warrior and role model for young men in this country like myself to look up to. Charlie? Cheating the force! What an absolute hero! Once again, go and check out the original video in the description. Check out the links. Donate if you can. Check out the book, as he said. It's always great hearing stories about heroes and operators like this. Um, it's these people that are willing to do the bad stuff that people complain about, but they're willing to do that stuff so you can live your life in freedom and do what you want in your country. Um, it's not a load of rubbish. He generally laid down his life so you can have your freedom, put himself through hell, just to be the best you know he did one of the hardest and toughest trainings in the world to become a u.s navy seal to go on these deployments you know it's not just about being in a dangerous place and doing what people most people don't want to do it's you have to go through the training first to even get there that's what people don't even realize um he did that absolute warrior you saw how they were dressed as well it don't matter how you're dressed i hate it when they're like the most British Army units, US Army units, it's like, make sure your shirt's, you know, this, 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 shave, blah, blah, blah. Look at him in a t-shirt, body armor, weapon, helmet, just doing the job and getting the job done. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, apps, like the, the awards and the achievements he has, he has got throughout his career are absolutely amazing. It's just sad that he lost his life. So I hugely pay your respects to him. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, mate. Um, what an absolute true hero and it was really nice hearing this story and hopefully we can get this story out to many more people um, but it just shows like in the world there's bad things going on that people need to deal with um, so you can live your life and these are one of those heroes and sounds like an absolute lad um, you can see by the videos he just you know loves having a laugh loves just being like his missus said being a goofball um, but when it comes to the battlefield, was an absolute serious, highly professional operator and got the job done. So well done to him. Well done to the US Navy SEALs and thank you.